All right, guys, today I'm in town, um, Grand Junction, and I am working on a uh, Genie S60 boom for a shop. He bought this thing at an auction, of course, these two booms, and I redid the swivel. I resealed the swivel valve in this one, and I'll be showing a video of that one if you guys haven't already seen it. Um, it's still got some massive leaks. Um, there's a hose leaking up there and there's the boom, uh, the lift cylinder is leaking. Um, it's, just, it's more than just a drip, it's just a steady flow coming out of it. And so it's dripping all over and getting down into the turntable and on top of the swivel so that they at first thought my swivel valve was still leaking. But it's, it's coming all from that that cylinder there um but the story with this one is they got it at auction it got loaded on a trailer obviously um i don't know is it pushed on or drove on but i think he did say it started at some point but the complaint with it and i got some i've got some uh stuff out already i pulled up a wiring diagram and uh I've to save time on the video I've already done some pre-checks on it this is a s60 model year 2001 genie but I've done some pre checks on it just checking the basics you know battery um, all that stuff and so the complaint is As you guys can see, it's a crank no start, you know. So that's the customer complaint. Uh, it won't start. When you turn the key on on these, especially when you bump the starter, usually you can hear the fuel, you know, the fuel pump turn on. So, if we go to the power side got no power to there so we have a constant <sighs> This side of the solenoid should be constant power. I'm just using it for a, I'm just using it for a power source. So we got power there. We got ground while we're cranking. So basically what I'm trying to do here today is, um, like I said, my first initial thoughts when I am come up to this thing is when I turn the key on and crank it, I have nothing as far as the fuel pump goes. So I know that's kind of kind of a red flag a little bit because 
like I said, I don't know a whole lot about these things, but I did pull up a wiring diagram on this. Um, but I know just from the ones I've dealt with, usually you'll have uh, the fuel pump come on when you turn the key on. All the e-stops are out, key's on. Even when I crank it, I'm just not getting any fuel pump here. So the next step I did was you turn the key on this little test switch when you push this test switch this little toggle some of the genies have them on the outside of the box here but what it does is it it um, lights the the fuel pump up excuse me it lights the fuel pump up when you turn this on it turns the fuel pump on and then the other thing that it also does is if you hold I think if you hold that on or you turn this off you hold that test switch and then turn the key on it's supposed to give you some flash codes here but um, when I push this I get nothing so the other thing I'm gonna look at is in order for these things to start you have to have um of course we want number nine ignition or fuel to come on that light um and we also want you know our start input of course we got that because it's cranking um start relay should be coming on and we also need tachometer so we need number two to come on because on this way spark ignition if um, it relies heavily on the the crank position sensor and then it has to see a certain speed for it to get spark so those are some of the inputs that we have to have so if I crank it we're getting number two nine ignition or fuel one three so start relay start input we're getting all those signals there so um <clears throat> again i was trying to find out um so we know that this light's lighting up but does are we truly getting power from the module to the relay so if I go to a ground and then I go to number nine, we should see, man, this is hard to do. We should see that light light up. And we do. So this wire Sorry, this wire here, number nine coming out of the module, I looked on the on the wiring diagram, should go to this relay, which is um, CRT relay. So if we look at our diagram. Okay, where are we at? So yeah, control relay two. So if you guys can see, number nine ignition fuel goes over to control relay number two, which is the one I just showed you, and comes over. So we should have power at at pin at 86, right? So. Obviously, 86 is going to be, should be this dude. And we do have power there. Let me get you. I'm going to shut off the camera. I'm going to get 
Let's see if I can get a tripod or something set up here. So we got power at 86. So then I'm trying to do this video, um, which hopefully it works out for me because I'm, uh, I don't know where this is going to go here, but I'm trying to show on this one because I know a lot of people, I see on the popularity, not of many people watch my videos, but these seems like a lot of people um, have trouble with these boom lifts and the wiring on them and that's that's kind of a, a given on this so um, trying to be a little bit more in depth on how I go about troubleshooting something on this one instead of just showing the back of my head so on our CRT CR2 um, number 30 should be should be our battery power correct and then we also have a ground but that this relay is going to latch and give power to Pin one, red, light green, that goes to the main engine harness connector. So, let's make sure, let's just stick a, and sometimes, this is how I go about things with electrical, and some guys just go on tugging on wires and and uh, uh, disconnect and stuff. And that works sometimes, guys, but I'm gonna tell you, more often than not, not that stuff will bite you in the butt. Because um, a lot of times you'll wiggle something or do something and, and you don't know what you did, or you could just waste. The biggest thing is, sometimes it works out great for you and you're like there 15 minutes, you're like, oh, look at that wire and you get things fixed and it works out great but in my experience that rarely ever happens it's it's usually more productive and usually um, more accurate to diagnose um, things by going through and like testing like at the relay and finding exactly where you're losing power instead of just finding all the wires on the circuit like the fuel pump and just start pulling on stuff and and shooting power to stuff that you don't know where it might go um so uh, this the relay is a really good place to to check as you can see i've already done this check but i wanted to show you guys this much anyways so we got constant power there so if we put the relay back in and turn the key off here and put the relay in this should be our control wire to the to the fuel pump so we're getting power out of the relay on the control side to the um, on the power side of the relay we're getting power should be going back to the engine harness so it kind of makes goes back to the engine harness and then comes back around to the fuel pump is actually mounted here so it looks like it goes through a harness so then the next thing I want to find out is this this red light green um, pin number one so it looks like we have a white purple a yellow black next to it well no because that's pin seven pin 18 so no we're looking for pin number one red light green so let's go find that wire and 
So as you can see, I got this wire. I'm hooked onto this wire, which is the pink light green wire. And these are, these terminals are numbered. So this is our number one. So we should have power to there if our wire is good, right? <clears throat> And so what I got, what I utilize a lot, since I only work by myself, is I got a, a test light here that's hooked to that wire. And since it's dark in here, shaded, hopefully I'll be able to see that, wire, that light light up. These are the, this is the things you have to come up with when you're working by yourself. And you guys probably can't see that because it's really hard for me to see. But. That test light is lighting up. So. <clears throat> Now that we know we have power to here, I want to look at the other side of that. Um, I want to look at the other side of that connector. <clears throat> So if we go to pin one, red, green, yep. And that's our keep alive power, which comes over and goes to ARLG something. But it comes down, goes over. And that's gonna power up our main power relay which also this red wire here also feeds our fuel pump it doesn't it's it doesn't have anything to do it looks like with the starter relay from what I can see right now but it does control or power up the fuel pump relay so that's definitely something to look at. So we should have power coming in to this um, CRFA, this power relay. It looks like there's a black, white, a red, a brown, light green, and a yellow on there. This is the relay that we were looking at in the picture and I moved my probe over to the red um, wire coming into it. So now I want to see what we got there. So I don't don't have power at 87 on the red wire so what I should have done first is actually what I should check is um, this uh, AY yellow wire so I'm gonna move over to them there and recheck but for some reason we're not getting power out of that relay so so we are getting power to um, 30 the AY which is I think means old yellow So, um, so what 
I think I'm gonna do real quick and I'm gonna kind of skip to what I was talking to you earlier about just pulling stuff apart I'm gonna pull this uh, relay apart actually I'm gonna turn the key off first and I'm just gonna take a look so either we got at this point I might be jumping ahead a little but either we have a bad power relay or we have um, a problem with let's see the black white wire which is is that black white We also may have a problem. I have to test that other wire. What I'm gonna do is gonna uh, turn the key off and uh, pop that relay open. And just take a real quick look at it. Part. Let me uh, let me get these guys set up. Here. And by the way, all this stuff back here. Whoa. It's supposed to be. There's a little hangers and stuff for, I didn't take actually take this stuff off. So I don't know if they did or, or this stuff's just been dangling. But I'm gonna pull this apart. Yeah, this is the power relay. Maybe. Ooh. Looky there. That could be the problem there. Look at that. Can you guys see that? Hmm. That's on our. So that's on our. Um, and there's all kinds of like water in there. Yeah, that might have found what's going on here. Hmm. And I don't know if the relays. the relay is good it could be just corroded there's a bunch of like moisture in there I don't know if I have a relay like that I'm gonna have to look and see and then I'm gonna get some cleaner and some brushes see if I can clean that terminal out sealed on the it's sealed on the back side no it's not it's got what I mean is it's got the the plastic here I can pull that back and and flush that out but it's um the rubber's still there but some reason there's a hole in this seal here that's still on there. But so for some reason there's a whole bunch of corrosion and moisture in there. So let me uh 
Let's see if I gotta if I can clean this relay up. Hopefully it, it still works because I probably don't have something like that. And then um, I can clean this connector up. I did have a relay that might work. To, um, I might have to pull that whole connector apart, maybe even replace the terminal, I don't know. shut it off because I don't know what kind of wires I have probably wrapped <coughs> I'll probably get wrapped up in something but there she goes so the fuel pump doesn't kick on on this one when you turn the key on but as soon as you hit the the start button it does and now with our check engine our test light or test switch toggle yeah I can hear the fuel pump kick on well so I guess a guy could say looking at this video and from all the blabbing I've done on it that I had to do some serious digging to find that relay so that relay um, the coil on it the wire on it the windings on it were totally green crusty so um that wire or that relay wasn't no good so i had to do some serious digging to find something that would work um and i think that one's gonna work fine it seems like <coughs> But, um, so I guess going back to what I was saying that, um, I guess on this one, it's possible if a guy just started pulling stuff apart and 
Um, I don't know without having the wiring diagram and tracing the wires, I don't know how you would uh, know which relay was which, but I guess the guy could have just started unplugging stuff and popped that relay and said, ooh, look at all that green crusty goodness. And uh, might have been able to figure out a lot faster than I did. We got, came to the same same point, but again, guys, in my experience, that usually never happens. Just unplugging stuff and and looking at stuff, you could start unplugging and pulling on wires and looking at wires and from one end to the other and on this one. I mean those relays are in the back there you might have been able to to pull it off but on most machines just sitting there going around when you don't know what's going where and just unplugging stuff usually you're not going to have a good outcome in my experience so i mean it did take me a little bit of time but not too much time and we got it figured out for them so yeah it's running it uh let's make sure don't sound very good at all but the complaint was a crank no start like i said i probably got stuff wrapped up in here and all I did was take, I got these little brushes and um, I, th I think they're actually like nylon, but what they are is just little uh, airbrush or paint gun um, brushes. I buy them at the, at the store for a couple bucks. They're just for cleaning out paint guns, I think. But I took some of that and then I took some, of course, some uh, deoxidizer removes this stuff, removes oxidation, um, electronic cleaner, and I flushed it out with that, the terminal. And then use those brushes and a pick and kind of just <coughs> without spreading the terminal just clean that cleaned it off and flushed it out and uh, I wasn't sure if I was gonna have to take the whole connector apart and replace the pin but um, you know I'll guarantee it um, if it has any any troubles I was happy with the way it cleaned up so um, if it has any more troubles, we'll know where to go, and I can just come back and and do that. But um, it's really not necessary. Like I said, the once I brushed and cleaned it off, it looked. I didn't. I think I got rid of all the green crusties on it and cleaned it up real nice. So um, I was kind of my first initial thoughts were on this one was that it could have been rodent rodent damage but um it looks like um it looks like it was corrosion um why that got that terminal got so much corrosion in it um the seals are on the on the connector i'm not sure um but yeah so I don't think I'm gonna blab on anymore. Um, I got to get cleaned up and know how it goes, get to the next one. Cause there's always a next one. So I'm gonna get cleaned up real quick. Put this tray back in, this swings back in. And then this bolt goes underneath and bolts this tray in. And then, um, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to get all my wires, my laptop, everything cleaned up, get the uh, relay bolted back up into the box up there, get the box closed up, 
started up and uh, a couple more times I'll probably show you guys that after I'm all cleaned up make sure it's running running right starting right up so that was the complaint though so we got that fixed anything else that's wrong with it, it's additional additional work but um, I'll be back with you guys once I get this all cleaned up and uh, we'll fire it up a few more times let's uh fire this thing up run for uh, now that it's running it doesn't sound as bad I think they probably tried to spray a bunch of starting fluid in it thinking that was what was wrong with it and uh, I think that's why it, it sounded so rough when it first started up but um, hopefully that all that most of that starting fluid had uh, you know evaporated and the gallon that got sprayed down I can smell it is why I say that but I can smell that they sprayed starter and fruit in it but it's been sitting long enough that I think you know it was a little rough starting up but it um didn't didn't blow anything up so it's starting to smooth out sounds pretty good can hear that fuel pump. It's buzzing along. Fuel pump's buzzing along. Got oil pressure. Fires right up. All right, guys, well, call this another video. Hope you guys found it, somebody found it useful or entertaining or whatever, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.